Hi friends, let's check out some more houses. I'm starting a playlist for these reaction videos, so go check it out if you like this format. And please leave a comment suggesting other house videos that you find that you think would be fun to look at. Today we're hanging out with Nick Lewis. He has a YouTube channel all about interior design. I love him. I've learned a lot from him. Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. Okay, today we are doing the much awaited house tour, the house tour that I have promised for three years. Now we're doing a full house tour. You're gonna see all the different spots. We're gonna start where you always are sitting. This is where you sit for all of my videos. This is my background normally, but you see I'm standing. Now I don't follow Nick super closely. He's doing this house tour now because he's listed his condo in Vancouver for sale. And I hope that his realtor pops in, but I doubt that's gonna happen. The panel moldings here, a lot of people really notice the panel moldings right away when they look at my space. They're very, just that little touch of traditional that I kind of like. I just think it adds a lot of texture to the walls, makes them a little bit more interesting. The moldings are by Matri. So is all my trim, by the way, is also by Matri. I absolutely love the panel moldings. I think that moldings are so underappreciated. I go into all of these new construction homes and uh, it's seriously lacking. The, all of the trim is boring and it's not something that you think about. When I do see some good moldings, I geek out over it a little bit. The best that I find are usually in like 1920s houses. You know, they're ornate, they're beautiful. It's obviously made by a craftsman who spent a lot of time on it. Uh, but there's all of these new techniques that uh, I don't see very often actually uh like rarely ever only on very expensive houses because it's very expensive to do it look at this i even have a pinterest board all about trim molding um so like look at this it's so cool you've got this almost uh non-existent molding here but i really like how they can kind of create this seamless almost flush molding with the drywall the reason it's so expensive is because it's all built in you have to really plan for it in the the beginning of the building process. It's very difficult to retrofit. You can kind of see here how uh, they're doing this with, um, you know, some corner uh, flashings here built into the drywall and then it clips in place. It's very cool, but uh, pretty labor intensive. And look how the TV is built into the design there. It's all perfectly seamless. I like that. Over here, we've got my mid-century console from West Elm that I really like. Also, this cutie little table lamp here is by Huey Lighting. I just featured them in a video I did a couple of weeks ago, so uh, you can check that out. My coffee table is by Eternity Modern. Really enjoy them. Okay, he glasses over the coffee table too much. Um, that is just stunning. Look at how it's just like a seamless piece of granite marble i'm not sure but it's beautiful here we are in the kitchen a lot of people don't they're confused by the kitchen like you can't once you leave the living room people have no clue the shape of this apartment which is another thing that brings me joy because people think that's an accent wall people think the rest of my apartment's over here it's not this is the end of the apartment over here the kitchen is probably the area of the home that i have done sort of the least it's Looks nice. when it was renovated before the countertops the sill granite sink, cabinets, this was all very much done before I got here. So I didn't do a lot of the changes. The cabinets are, I believe they're from Ikea. Well, I know they're from Ikea, but I think it's called the Tormund. And they may have actually just discontinued it not that long ago. I don't think we have that in the States. We're mostly using section in uh, US Ikeas. I think the Ikea plays really well here though. I think Ikea kitchens play well most places. You might know that I'm an Ikea kitchen fanboy, but how can you not be? The quality to cost curve on the cabinets are just out of this world, especially if you, you know, start throwing in some custom fronts, some custom poles. It makes things a little bit more expensive, but it really elevates them and hides the Ikea-ness of it. I don't know if these are custom fronts or not. I bet not. They have kind of an Ikea vibe. They look decent on camera, um, but the whole kitchen is a, it's a very over-the-top style, which I don't hate, but uh, is a certain vibe. I recently visited a $4 million house in Seattle that had an extensive Ikea kitchen, so take that for what you will. I'm actually working on some Ikea cabinets. Let me show you my construction zone. 
So here's my recent closet project. These are all Ikea cabinets that I'm putting some wallpaper on here and then uh, just redoing my closet entryway. I got rid of the wall that was up here. This is like a typical sliding closet door and we've got like a cool little bureau situation going on here. If you're enjoying our Seattle real estate and renovation content, subscribe and share with your friends. Also, I'm a real estate agent in the Seattle area. So if you're looking to buy or sell a home, send me a message and we can get started working together. Okay, back to the video. Now this is the most annoying piece of the whole apartment. I'm not gonna lie to you. It is this under cabinet sort of situation that the previous owner did. So what he decided to do, which again, I hate, is he decided to not have any uh, corner cabinets. He hated like corner, corner cabinets, cabinets, which I get because corner Lazy cabinets Lazy nice. What he decided to do is he just went them straight, like put them right flush to the wall and then put these like weird. I don't really like it either. I do love blaming design problems and mistakes on the prior owners. Uh, I do it all the time. Oh, these floors are cheap and terrible. Oh, the last people did it. Oh, these cabinets don't fit quite right. Oh, the last people did it. If I honestly could have done it all over again, I probably would have just like ripped them out and done it again. But you know, then I would have to have redone a brand new kitchen and I was just like, I'll live with it. Would I have done it? No. Would I recommend you do it? I'm no. struggling with this right now too. Our house was mostly fixed up when we moved in, but uh, you know, the prior owners did a terrible job as cheap as possible because it was a rental and, um, you know, I get it. I probably would have done the same thing. I have been slowly renovating things, but, you know, it's hard to rip out and replace brand new things. Every time I do, though, I'm like, oh, I should have done that years ago. And it's really nice. All of my kitchen tools, of course, are all America's Test Kitchen because don't listen to me. Listen to America's Test Kitchen because they're never wrong sure. when it comes to the recommendations including their the beautiful KitchenAid that I just actually bought a couple of weeks ago. Big, big fan of that. Yeah, I love my KitchenAid mixer. I had a client give me theirs when I helped them sell their house a couple of years ago. And, you know, she said that she was past the prime baking years of her life. And I've definitely put it to good use since then. Although I do really want the pasta maker attachment. That seems like a, a really nice upgrade. Also, my espresso machine. So I featured this in a video like a year or so ago. I love coffee. Could I say in all honesty that every single day in 2023 I've had a glass of water? No, I cannot say that. I can't honestly say that in good faith. I cannot guarantee that that is true. Can I say I've had a cup of coffee every single day? Yes, without a doubt. Every single day in 2023, I have had an Americano with cream, no sugar. And it's been made on this little machine. I love this Rocket Espresso machine. This is not a cheap machine, but again, with the amount of Americanos that I drink, I've probably it's paid for itself. That's probably some girl math there, but it's probably paid for itself. Let's just go with that. Let's say like three fifty, no four dollars for an Americano with tip, divided by the seventeen hundred dollar machine that this is, and that's like four hundred and twenty five days to pay off. Not bad, you know, a little more than a year. After that, it's practically paying you to make coffee. For three years, I had Hale Navy in the office. People thought this was a feature wall. It's not a feature wall. It's actually part of the whole hallway. Was all in Hale Navy, but as I'm selling the place. I decided that white probably would show better for a lot of people. Some people, you know, navy's controversial and I wanted to make it really light and bright and whatever. That's very true. You know, definitely paint your house white when you're selling it. You know, I've heard people say, it's boring. I'm so much more of a fun person than that. And it might be true. I've heard it all. But it's not about you when you're selling your house. It's about creating an inviting space that potential buyers can come into, imagine all of their stuff, their life in this house, and, uh, you know, appealing to the broadest possible audience. That is how we got the whole HGTV gray everything uh, situation, but it's a good business move. This is a walnut table from Sunday's Furniture. Big fan of Sunday's. They sent this to me and it's solid, solid wood. It's the formation table, I believe. It's on the verge of being too big for this space, but I don't care because I made that as a choice because I really wanted it to be four seater. And it's, again, it's on the edge. Does everybody always- Yeah, I just noticed the uh, island here. Look how it's, um you know, like a waterfall on this side. Usually you would see maybe bar stools there, but I really like this. That's nice. 
upholstered chairs, which were great, just add that little texture element. But with the walnut and the walnut and the metal from the brass here in the fixture, I wanted something soft to provide a little bit of coziness and some comfort there. And that's why I went with the, the uh, woven on the seat. I think it was yeah, the right I choice. like that advice. I, you know, we kind of want some new dining chairs. I think that's why, because we're craving a little bit of coziness in the dining room because our chairs are hard plastic but you know toddlers make such a mess and i don't think fabric or upholstered chairs are in our future very soon at all let's move into the hallway so this is what you don't see we're moving now into an area that's like what's beyond the wall and here we are it's not that exciting it's a hallway <laughs> <laughs> but you asked for the home tour. Don't blame me if it's not that interesting. Anyway, here we are in the hallway. I painted this white. This was navy before. We've got a boucle bench. Now calm down, okay? I can hear you already. I thought Nick hates boucle. He went off on boucle. Two things. Number one, I wanted it in the felt, but it was like a six month lead time. So I was like, fine, I'll get the boucle. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is that I have said on record, check the tape, that boucle is fine. What's boucle? yarn with a looped or curly ply. I think it's cute. I like it. So long as it's not in an incredibly high traffic area. You may say a hallway is high traffic. No, it isn't. This particular bench that, basically so is only used inviting. for when I put my shoes on. Like that's basically what it's for. So therefore I believe in the longevity of this bench because it is in sort of a space where it's really not gonna get used that much. This, this is maybe a little bit more interesting because I have a really funky tile. I love a funky tile. I'll be honest though, like I was really unsure about putting this tile in as I'm sure you would expect because it's a little bit weird and kind of kooky. But honestly, I've had it for like four years and I wouldn't have it any other way. I love this tile. I gotta say, it's like, I love the colors. I think, you know, you got a little bit of blue, a little black, a little gray, whatever. It sort of works with the rest of the colors that I use in the space. I really love it. Moving into the bathroom though. You know, it's fun. I think that we need more whimsy in life, don't you think? I'm trying to embrace that in my home these days. You know, more prints, a little bit more wallpaper, uh, recycled architectural elements, lots of plants and patterns. As a realtor, I still say paint it white, but as a human, I'm a fan. My store in my pantry which is not that interesting. You can just see all my Rao's tomato sauce, which is Rao's, whatever you want to pronounce it. And my Scrub Daddies, which I love Scrub Daddy. I'm going to do an Amazon video. And of course, I'm going to be talking about the Scrub Daddy. I know what you're thinking. How good could a sponge really be? I used to be like you, and then I had a Scrub Daddy. And now I know it turns out a, a like a sponge can change. I, I've heard of Scrub Daddy. I haven't ever really used one. I have a realtor friend who gives Scrub Daddies as closing gifts, and she swears by them. I haven't really gotten on the bandwagon, but you know, I haven't used it yet. Maybe it's time. So this is my PAX wardrobe. PAX. I'm doing PAX closets in the entry right now. They're not as nice as the kitchen section cabinets. They're a little bit thinner, a little flimsier, but I really like how modular everything is and how you can really build it out and individualize it. Which for like the first six months, basically this was my most viewed video was a PAX wardrobe review, which is so funny because it's a that video might be I would never make. how I found anymore. Nick like, as I was YouTube, researching I like I was for my guy. closets. And then I had a bunch of paint videos take off and I was like the paint guy. Still have my PAX, still enjoy it, still a great option. Okay, and then here we are in the bedroom. First of all, let's start about the wallpaper because it, to be fair, it is basically kind of like an accent wall, but here we are. I was gonna say, I'm not saying oh, I hate accent plan. walls. I think I literally yeah. said so I hate YouTube. accent walls in videos, so it. let's not lie to each other. I love this wallpaper. I don't know um, if I, I would closet. necessarily choose that's it now That's not to say that I would appreciate all of you for subscribing. Thank you so much for this room, room but I that's obviously where I put the plaque. Maybe you should come up with one that just is a little bit more my my style. I don't want like silver, you know how I feel. And then of course you also have Sophie's desk over here. I don't know, I kind of like it here, just one wall. It. I guess it is an accent wall. I like accent walls, so that make me bad at design. But this kind of acts as like a headboard for the bed, which frames it really nicely. I like it. The rug, this is cute. This is the West Coast rug. It's a nice, beautiful jute rug. And the flooring, I probably should mention the flooring. I haven't mentioned that yet. That is from Divine Flooring. It is in the color Chateau, which is not their lightest, blondest wood. That would be the naked 
This is just a little bit, it's light, but it's kind of moving more towards a medium tone brown, which I like because I didn't want that really yellowy, creamy white, I want white oak. I wanted something a little, just a little bit more depth to it, and that would be the Chateau. Warmer floors are really making a comeback, which I'm thankful for. I never really liked the gray. You know, it's really oppressive and sterile, and you have to work really hard to warm up a room with gray floors. The I've seen this in more and more new construction. I think the white oak is probably the most popular thing that people are doing, but I'm loving this trend. I'm fully on board. Here we are into the patio. So as I said, the apartment itself is around a thousand square feet. The patio itself is actually bigger than the indoor space. I am very lucky to live in a great area in downtown Vancouver and have a patio of this size. This has been fantastic for different parties. It's been great during the 2020-21 situation to have this much outdoor space because we all know that was an absolute premium. I feel very fortunate to have that. I have like lots of space. This is, I've had this for a long time. Oh my gosh, this patio is absolutely amazing. I like the condo. It's very nice, very well designed, uh, nicely put together. But you would buy this condo for the patio space, for the exterior space. Have you been to Vancouver? It's amazing. It's kind of like Seattle, but uh, bigger and better. The mountains feel closer. It's easy to get around the city on a bike. Um, the beaches are really accessible. It's expensive though. I did a little bit of research on Redfin trying to find uh, roughly maybe what he listed this condo at. And to give you context, I found a condo right in downtown Vancouver, 1100 square feet, not as stylish as Nick's, uh, that's priced at a million seventy five, and it didn't have the exterior space either. Um, that's a million seventy five Canadian, which is about eight hundred thousand USD. Condos in Seattle at least saw a huge hit during COVID. You know, people didn't want the um, people close together, communal living sort of situations. They wanted exterior space, so they saw a dip. But now I'm seeing a lot of people sort of thinking about returning to the city, getting a little bit closer. So the suburbs are studying to come back down a little bit and city living is making a comeback. Anyways, thanks for hanging out with me, and if you're thinking about making a home in Seattle, send me a message. Let's work together. Bye.